I pick up a memory I thought I lost it long ago Remember the freshness Good morning, Sven. Good morning. Another quarter. You delivered a strong first quarter. You had a solid second quarter. We live in uncertain times and still you're able to deliver a strong third quarter. Record uh, high turnover, which grew with 23%, currency neutral. Order intake grew with uh, almost 23% and sales with 17% compared to Q3 last year. You have also made a very exciting uh, acquisition in North America, which I will get back to. But let's start with the order intake. Record high. What's the reason behind that? Yeah, we are continuing to have a good uh, momentum in our business uh, and especially the sales has been very good, especially taking into consideration the uncertainties we have in the world. But it's a very uh, differentiated picture where you have a strong US market, a reasonable good uh, European uh, some Asian markets are doing well. China is not doing very well uh, due to their decision of continuing closing down, uh, etc. So it's been a, a, a mix. So we are very pleased with what we have achieved so far. That doesn't mean that uh, we do not see uh, potential difficulties coming uh, later during uh, next quarter. You were talking about the geographics. The po development have been positive in all divisions. Are there any specific area or progress you would like to, to highlight? No, but I think that we, we are just continuing the work in the clean air journey. We have uh, been very decisive. We have a, a focus on efficiency. We have a focus on creating systems, uh, offers to the markets that has been attractive. It's a mix of our different digitalization projects together with new, as we call it, smart filters, uh, where we give more value to our customers. And I think that is the reason that we have been successful in most areas. Uh. When looking at the report, to me it looks like Monitor and Control Division uh, has had a little bit tougher quarter. Firstly, do you agree on that? And if you do, what is Definitely. the future? Uh, Monitor and Control has had a tough uh, year. They made a fabulous last year, but uh, we have had a lot of challenges in that division. One is the market where China has been a very large market and still is. Uh, for especially GASMED, uh, where we've now seen uh, difficulties to supply, uh, difficulties to develop a market, since we cannot travel, not even our own uh, personnel that are situated in Hong Kong. It's also the division that has biggest problem with their uh, supply chain. Uh, we have uh, high tech, we have specified product, so it's very difficult to change component because then you have all these uh, different um, certificates that need to be uh, revised, etc. Mm -hmm. So they have had a very challenging year. Uh, there are some minor improvements. Uh, but it's going to continue to be challenging for them, especially on these uh, areas. But on the other hand, they have had good success with some uh, areas. We are growing in the US. We are setting up our new facilities and our new sales structure in, in US. So it's not all, not all doom and gloom, uh, definitely not. But they have challenges and they will solve them, but it will take a little bit more time. In the, in the beginning we talked about the acquisition and you, you acquired Robovent uh, during the quarter. What was the business uh, reason uh, behind that? <coughs> we have a, a strategic philosophy. We should try to be number one, potentially number two, but we try to be number one in application areas where we are active and also in, ge in geographic regions. Uh, 
Uh, we are a leading uh, and been a leading uh, welding expert uh, in the application of welding. We have not been the top player in the US market. There has been numerous others. The market is slightly different from the European uh, one. We have, by acquiring RoboVent, positioned ourselves that number one in welding, both in Europe as well as in the US. And that is an agreeable situation to be in. And that was the reason why we acquired RoboVent when we got the chance to do so. Looking back, you have had three quarters with good development. You're also building uh, for the future, re repositioning the company. You digitalize and IoT enable filters uh, and much more. You also build new facilities and expand facilities around the world in Helsingborg, UK, USA. Why and how are you doing that? Well, <coughs> that's not just <laughs> for the fun of it. If we take some of the US, uh, uh, especially in, in Thomasville, where we are adding uh, more space uh, for a new concept, making uh, it possible to have a new concept. And it's also so. We have grown. Uh, we have, over the last 10, 12 years, quadrupled the sales in that part of duct and filter. That means that we have outgrown uh, our uh, current facilities. And that's why we have to do so. Otherwise we stagnate, but we want to continue. And we continue to grow and we will always support our businesses uh, wherever they are. If they are growing and we are, it's in our strategic field, we will support them, whatever investment that means. So we will make a significant addition there. When it comes to Helsingborg, it's also been uh, long time overdue. We have uh, two separate locations, etc. We are short of space for the assembly. We are short of space for a uh, testing facility, etc. So what we uh, do, we are building for the future in Helsingborg. We are building a new manufa efficient manufacturing facility, but we are also adding uh, testing uh, facilities, uh, development center, to be able to continue our journey and stay in the forefront technology-wise as well. Really, really exciting and I'm sure uh, there's a lot of excitement within the organization around this. Three quarters with good development. Looking at Q3 again, you have had the highest EBITDA ever uh, in a quarter and an order book larger than ever. I guess you're proud and, uh, on the achievement so far and the outlook, it's, uh, what do you think about Q4 here? It's very difficult yeah. to foresee. Uh, some of the things we have in monetary terms, we have had the, the largest EBITA ever in the history, which is good. However, we need to continue to control our percentage so we're not slipping. There has been challenges in, in that respect. Uh, we seen good order intake, but we've also seen that there in some areas, as I mentioned before, a slight nervousness around the uh, investors, the uh, investment levels, our customers, etc. Some areas are going very well. Uh, we have as we are positive for the Q4, but we also see the continuous problems or challenges when it comes to supply, transportation, and the geopolitical environment that we are working on. Some of these things are completely out of our control, so we are just adopting to that. But we see a cautiously optimistic uh, view also on Q4 uh, and again we are working with the right things. We are selling clean air or the possibility of delivering clean air and a few months ago WHO came 
with a report again emphasizing the problem with the lack of clean air around the world. So we see that as a positive. The awareness is growing. What we have been preaching and trying to explain is we at the industry can solve these problems. We have the technology, it's a matter of investment. So that part partly balance the negatives of a uh, slowdown in economy and so on. So we are cautiously optimistic also for the coming quarters. But again, there are lots of black clouds in the horizon and no one knows. But we have been so far quite good in adopting to the situation. So that's a long answer saying we don't know about the future. Then I thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much. Let's sing for the good ones And all the ones we love We live in a great time Don't let it slip